this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Oh, welcome back to my channel. Oh, well, we are here for another one of our mask making sessions. We are up to week number 169, would you believe? So, yep, for anyone who doesn't watch my channel, we are doing reruns. So we are rerunning week number 69. We are up to now week number 169. So what we are making today, we are making triple envelope pockets. And these you are, you are going to be making, if you followed along last week, with your little offcuts from the envelopes, um, which I did say at one point, you know, keep these because we will make something with them. Well, it was more a case of do as I say, not as I do, because, yep, I actually binned mine, would you believe? <laughs> you know, kind of, it was just a moment of madness when I just thought, oh, I'm not going to use them, put them in the bin. I mean, hello, why did I not see what we were doing this week? Because actually, I did then go on to use them. So I failed miserably, didn't keep my offcuts, so I'm now going to have to use complete new envelopes again. Um, so if you did not see last week, or you have done like me, and you've binned the bits we cut off, you will need some envelopes. If you did, however, keep your bits off from your envelopes, you will need those bits. Um, so what you're going to need, you're going to need some, you know, some envelopes and potentially the pieces you've cut off or some envelopes that you're going to be happy to cut up, if that makes sense. Um, now, again, just like last week, I'm using rectangular envelopes. So I didn't end up trying one last week with a square envelope. It would not work for this anyway, um, because, of course, you would have only cut off like a very tiny slither from the top. Um, so, yeah, you will need kind of something where if you're cutting it, you can afford to cut, you know, bigger chunks, if that makes sense. So you're going to use your envelopes. You're going to use some papers for decorating your envelopes. Now, again, and I know I say this every week, I have got printables here. That is because that's what I have most of these days. You do not have to use printables. You know, if you've got mainly scrapbook paper, that would be fine. If you've got, you know, book pages or sheet music or wrapping paper, something like that, that would all be fine. You don't have to use printables. That's what I have got most of myself, um, you know, these days. So I've got a variety of printables. Now, these are all thinnish paper. So when I say thinnish, um, I think at the moment I'm using it's 100 um, GSM. So it's not as thin as copy paper, it's slightly thicker. That's just because that's what I'm using. If you've got copy paper thickness, that would be fine for this. Um, the only thing that I would recommend not particularly using is the thicker kind of scrapbook papers, you know, like the 250 GSM, 230, things like that. I would not recommend you using that. I'm just going to kind of alter my camera. Hopefully that's a bit better. So I wouldn't use the, you know, recommend using that. Um, so you've got your papers. You're then going to need some scissors um, just for kind of trimming around and things like that. Or if, of, of course, you, you know, prefer to use paper trimmer, that would be fine too. You're going to need some glue. Now, I always use the Anita's Tacky Glue. It's a wet-based glue. If you like to use a glue stick or, you know, different brand glue, that's absolutely fine too. And you're going to need, or I like to use anyway, a glue spreader. Now, when I say a glue spreader, I just use literally an old gift card or, you know, the hotel cards, things like that. Um, any of those things would be fine just to spread your glue out to get rid of any air bubbles. Now, aside from that, you may want to have things like your blendy tool and some ink for blending and things like that. Um, you know, that would be fine. Again, that's all optional things, you know, kind of maybe at the end or, you know, however you want to do it. Um, and the only other things that you might want is some things to decorate. Again, that's going to be for the end stages more. And that will be optional. I know I say this a lot, but I try to leave a lot of my pieces blank so that I can then decorate them when I pull them in to use for a journal. Um, but I will be decorating one to kind of just demonstrate. So let's get kind of started and um, yeah, just demonstrate one of these. Now, as I say, I did make the mistake of throwing my bits away. So I'm going to start with this envelope. Now, obviously, if this had been from last week, I would already have cut, you know, a section off of this. So I'm just going to cut this down here like that. OK, so what that's giving me, basically. Oops, just trim that along a little bit better. Is a pocket that I can put onto here. OK. 
And then, obviously, if I had been good last week and had done as I said and, you know, kept my bits rather than gluing, uh, gluing? Throwing, throwing them away, I would have then had bits still to use. Oh, sorry, I did forget to mention, you are going to want to glue your envelopes closed. Now, again, I kind of bypassed this because I was assuming that we would be using our envelopes from last week and I just quickly glued mine before the video but you're going to want to glue your envelopes closed because we are not using them as envelopes. We are using them, you know, as glued down or, you know, shut up pockets. So you're going to be gluing that closed. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to cut a little slither off of here or, you know, however big that you want this to be, basically. But this is what you're going to be attaching on to use as your pockets. So if you can see here, basically, and I'm hoping that the camera's picking this up, I know it's kind of tricky to see where it's all brown, but you've now got a pocket here, a pocket here, and a pocket, you know, in the top. So what you would then do is cover these with your decorative papers. So I'm just going to bring some paper in. I'm going to use, first of all, for this one, I'm going to use my bird chase papers. Please excuse the stuff that's on the back of there. Um, oops, let's just check that this isn't anything too, too, too confidential or anything on the back. Right, okay, so I'm going to just cut this round. So I'm just going to cut this here like that, okay? Now, I like to do this where basically it's cut, or, you know, I fold it, and that gives me my fold line. Okay, so I'm just going to cut that down here. Okie dokie. And then I'm just going to cut this here. So as you can see, my printer didn't print this print uh, borderless. So I've actually got the border that I can use for my, my markers. So yeah, I'm just going to now mark where I need to cut that. So about there, okay. I mean, I just find this an easy way to um, get your guides for where to cut, to be honest, by folding it in. And I'm just going to cut up that line, which is of course where it's not printed borderless. Okay, so that's my first piece, which will go onto there. And then I'm obviously going to decorate up my slithers that I've got here I'm just going to decorate up with some more of that paper like that okay so this one obviously it's got these little birds on so I'm thinking you know perhaps I want to try and include the whole of the bird so I'm going to actually take that down that way I think okay don't Like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this down as well. There we go. Okay, so that gives me my, you know, pocket number two. And then for my pocket number three, in fact, I could probably use this as almost like a template. So I'll just place this down onto the paper and we can just cut around that. So I'm just going to do it that way around or yeah, do it that way around. Okay. Okie dokie. And then along here. Okie dokie, right, let's get rid of that. So we've got a strip there, needs taken down a little bit, but that's fine. And then a strip here. Okay, so that's how our pockets would then be glued onto here. Okay, so I'm just going to take that down slightly. So 
don't think I'm making a good job of cutting this at all. So much for using a template. <laughs> I just well have not bothered. Oh dear. Right. Okay. Well, it's it's not too bad. So yeah, let me just cut that down slightly there. Right. So I can then just glue this down. So I'm just going to put my glue all over each of the pieces and then glue those down. So piece number one. Okie dokie, let me just get my wipe there. Okay, spread that glue out. There we go. And then I'm just going to glue that down here. So what you've got is your open, oops, your open envelope flap at the bottom. So what you want to then do is just run a line of glue on that bottom bit okay so that's just sealing your little envelopes or your little envelope pieces closed okay so we've got that one we're going to do exactly the same obviously on this one here Okey -doke. pop that down on there like that so they're just kind of an extension really of the um, pockets that we made last week which were obviously just kind of a single envelope pocket and you know I know we talked about last week you know really didn't get more easy you know and simple than last week's but these are you know by no means difficult at all so you know they are not going to be you know complicated or anything like that they're just going to be an extension of the ones we made last week you know to enable you to get more pockets going on so you know more storage space then for when you come to use them oops i've glued that the wrong way around right i thought that was looking a bit strange but i was going with the direction of the text so yeah right so glue down like that and this is where, you know, if you're using a, um, you know, glue stick instead, you might not even need to use a glue spreader because the glue, you know, it may kind of disperse more evenly. So then you're going to want to obviously put your pockets where you want them to be. Now, at this point, what I would do, I'm just going to do it again. Oh, I can no longer tell which was the bottom and which was the top. I think that was the bottom. Mm, no, that must be the, that must be the top, right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is obviously gauge where they need to go, if you see what I mean. Because you don't want to have like a pocket up there. You know, you want to kind of have them, you know, overlapping slightly, very slightly. Now, the other thing that I'm going to do is this first pocket, I'm just going to glue it down more like a belly band. So just going on those sides. Now, the reason that I'm doing that is because that's going to give us then a nice deep pocket. If I glued that on as a, you know, as a proper pocket, i.e. across the bottom as well, you're going to end up with a very, very, very shallow pocket. Now, that might be fine, you know, because maybe you only want a shallow pocket. Um, but if you want a deeper pocket, this is how to get that. So by gluing it on like a belly band it's going to still look like a pocket because of course we're gluing this one over the top of it but it's going to give you the full depth if you can see the full depth of the envelope to tuck your things in so it's just a bit of a sort of um you know trick really to be able to get a you know a bigger pocket going so we then just glue that one down like that okay so press your glue down Obviously, on all sides. That's it. Like that. Okie dokie. Now, obviously, this has got, um, you know, a little ridge here where it's had to glue over the other, you know, the other pockets. So you may want, depending on which glue you've used, you know, you may want to kind of press that down. So I'm just going to kind of put my iPad there over the top of that so I'll just put that to one side let's hope I don't lose that because that will be the next thing I'll have forgotten what I've done with it I won't be able to find it so let's run through that again just to kind of really um you know cement what we're doing 
so you've got your initial envelope okay so these are again you know the envelopes very similar that we made last week you're then going to cut your two pockets so we've got one like that and then I'm going to take another envelope and just cut another one like that okay and they're going to obviously just sit sit on your your piece like that so then what we're going to do we're going to cover them so let me just pick pick some paper okay so I might use this one here so this is my um I think it's the Parisian streets um yeah I think it's called Parisian streets so I'm just going to trim this down at the top like that okay so yeah okay let's just go in here Oh, I'm not going to have enough paper here, I think. That's just annoying, isn't it? Well, we'll see how we get on. Okay. And then I'm just going to mark roughly where it needs to come across here. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're going to then cut this down here. and then just cut it here and then just along this white border where it's not printed borderless okay so this is going to go on there like that and then what we want to do is of course make our pieces for our little you know pockets and you know I mean you may want to use um, completely different paper I'm using the same paper to obviously cover all of the bits I mean I just think that looks quite pretty but that you know you don't have to do that you may want to you know use something else and that would be absolutely fine too um, you know to kind of mix your papers mix them up with maybe some book page or some you know some sheet music or something that would all look very pretty as well so there we go and yeah, put that down. And then we just want to come up about here. Okay. Mm, I think I've cut that a bit short, to be honest, but never mind. I mean, to be honest, it doesn't really matter because when you come to decorate it, you know, you can always disguise that with, you know, just stick something over if you've got a bit much of a gap on one side or something, you know. You could always put a butterfly or something like that on there and it would just you know just disguise that so there's no mistakes are there in junk journals we're you know we're we're fine with everything we're fine with however it goes because it can all be rectified and it can all be sorted out nothing has to be too you know too fixed in or too set in stone as they say too set in stone so just then go there like that okay I've got the light on today because it's a little bit on the dark side. So, um, yeah, I hope that's okay. I know that I did have some um, feedback when I had the light on last. And, you know, generally the feedback was the lighting was fine. Um, so I'm hoping that it is fine and that, you know, we don't have kind of like a multitude of shadows just all over the, you know, all over the camera and where we're working. It doesn't look like that from where I am. But sometimes when you're filming, it can look different to obviously you know when it's actually being watched if you see what I mean so yeah I just hope it's okay but it is um yeah just one of those days that's quite dark so I thought well it's probably better with the light on than oops with it off because it may have been you know a bit too dim to actually see very much at all so again we just glue our pieces all down so one piece there okay Sorry about that horrible noise where that scraped across the glass. Okay, next one. 
Oh, and I'm so sorry, I can't remember now whether I actually said or not, but I think this is the Paris Streets papers. So I do apologise because I know that lots of you do like to know the papers that I'm using and I can't, you know, I just can't remember where I'm afraid whether I said it or not. So I, yeah, sorry about that. Um, right, okay. Spread that like that. Okay. And then obviously the big piece of paper we just want to put you know on here on the the big pocket or the base the base pocket so all like that okay dokey so this will probably be the last one that i actually demonstrate and then you know we'll kind of do like more assembly line style in um making these you know and we can just kind of relax and have a nice time but you know i just wanted to obviously run you through a couple of times because sometimes you know it's nice to see things more than once, isn't it? So, and that's, you know, that's the purpose of the mass making sessions is that we can genuinely, or, you know, gem, generally, anyway, that we can just, you know, take our time and kind of really do things thoroughly and slowly rather than kind of just rushing through and then sometimes, you know, missing, missing stages or, or anything like that. So then you've got your flaps. You're going to, again, run the glue. I don't know why I'm calling them flaps now, but, you know, run the glue along that outer edge okay so just to glue those shut so that one and then we've got this one so again just on that glue there okay like that okie dokie so we have got our three pieces we then are going to obviously layer them up and glue them down so i'm just going to do them i think like that now i'm yeah right mm. yeah like that i thought well that's strange that text upside down now right so again going to glue this like a belly band piece so your you know your first pocket i.e the piece that's in the middle you just want to go on like a belly band, just again, you know, so that you've got that full depth of the pocket. And just, you know, gluing it on belly band style, that's going to give you that ability. Okay? So, like that. Then the next one. Like that. Oops. Okie dokie, press that down. Okay. Like that. Okay, looking good. Just going to trim that out because I've just got a little extra bit there. So that's all there is to them. So you've got your top pocket and then you've got two pockets here so you've got this one and this one I don't want to pull it too hard because obviously my pockets aren't you know properly glued yet but that's all there is to those so yeah we're just going to kind of get um assembly line styling them really now so you know I'm going to do all my cutting first all my um you know then cutting of the decorative papers and you know what have you so yeah we can just relax now and um yeah enjoy ourselves and uh, have a nice time have a catch up and just, yeah, enjoy ourselves, really. So, um, yeah, I hope everybody is doing well. I hope your week started out well. For anyone who watches my channel, you'll know that I film these generally on a Monday. So, and I am filming this on a Monday. So I'm just going to cut these down. Okay, that one. And, yeah. So yeah, I am filming this on the Monday and um, yeah, I hope that everybody has had a good week and a good start to their week. Obviously, my week's only just started, so you know, it's a bit early to say how my week's going so far, but hey, <laughs> so far it's been cold is all I can say. Yeah, it's turned very, very cold. Now for this one, um, because actually I don't have any more of these size envelopes, so what I might do is cut the top and the bottom so that I form a couple of pocket pieces there with that. Although I'm now thinking that doesn't really look 
it looks like it's just fractionally bigger so in fact what I might do is do the opposite and make them from the brown um so yeah what I'll do is just take that and again just going to say I'm not going to throw that away because we might be able to use that for something else who knows whether we will or not but you know that's the start so and then I'll cut this down and that will give me the other pocket there we go sorry I know that I said I wasn't going to be talking you through anymore but yeah I just felt that was worthy of an explanation um yeah so yeah it was cold 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 this morning so yeah, I went to the gym and it was freezing. And then obviously I did the school run that was also freezing. So yeah, so far my feelings today are, <gasps> it was just freezing. And I know I say this all the time. Honestly, I mean, I use the um, term freezing very loosely because I'm well aware that obviously there are some genuinely freezing places. And my goodness, if you actually came and, you know, experienced the weather that I'm describing as freezing, you'd probably be like, what is she talking about? It is really not that cold at all. But to me, it felt freezing. I think in the car, when I went to the gym, I think it said, I think it said six degrees when I was coming back from the gym. Um, and I didn't look on the way. I forgot to look on the way, but it's normally a couple of degrees less than that when I go. So um, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure it was quite cold is, um, is the thing. Pretty sure it was pretty chilly. So yeah, but hey, I mean, this is December, so it's, I guess, to be expected. Okay. So what have we been up to this week? Well, not a lot, I have to say. Um, <laughs> yeah, just been busy working, really. Um, so yeah, just doing lots of work things. Right, I'm just going to cut my decorative papers, I think, now for, for these bits. So... Yeah, I've got some of my flea market papers, actually, which I think might be quite nice on here. Or maybe on the slightly bigger one. Yeah, maybe on that one. Um, yeah, I've been busy working. And, um, yeah, thank you so much to everyone who has purchased anything in my Advent Calendar series. Um, first of all, I do have an apology to make, which just seems to be yeah kind of like a standard thing lately that I'm having to apologize every week so yeah I want to apologize because obviously I had announced that the things would be listed at 2 p.m and you know all of that well unfortunately the last two days when 2 p.m has hit I've had no signal and so unfortunately the things have gone up slightly later than that so I do apologize for that um Unfortunately, I can't seem to find a way on Etsy to be able to schedule list listings. So again, if you know of a way to schedule a listing on Etsy, you know, please, please share below because that would be fantastic. Um, I did Google it. Obviously, I couldn't find a way, you know, to, to do that. So it's kind of dependent on me pressing the button. And of course, you know, if you're out and about, you don't always have kind of um, internet access and, you know, ability to be able to do that. Which, yeah, I do apologise for that. So I'm very, 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 very sorry. Um, but, you know, I hope that kind of if you've wanted to get something that you have, that you have got things, you know. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the first thing. Um, I'm trying to put a plan together for a series for in between Christmas and New Year. Um I haven't started filming it or anything like that. I'm still trying to kind of like research and, you know, come up with a proper plan because it's horrible if you start a series and then, you know, if you haven't kind of planned out, you know, let's just say if you want to do like for that period, it's like six days. If I don't plan something for six days worth of videos, you know, kind of beforehand, it can be so horrible and panic, um, you know, provoking. If suddenly you get to the halfway point and then you've run out of ideas, you know, for your videos. So it's kind of like nice if you can actually then, um, you know, try and kind of like go, OK, these are my ideas for all six days. So that's what I'm doing at the moment is trying to come up with an idea for all six days because, yeah, I don't want to kind of get to day four and then be like, oh, no, I've got no other ideas now. So, yeah, but all being well, you know, there will be a series between Christmas and New Year because I know that that can be a really tough time for a lot of people. And, you know, 
Um, not everybody obviously has family around and things to do between Christmas and New Year, you know, or indeed at Christmas. Um, so, you know, I do like to, and I have for the last couple of years at least, um, done a little series between Christmas and New Year. So, you know, definitely, definitely it's, it's on my, you know, on my list of stuff is to, you know, try and put something together for that period. Um, and also Christmas Day, I normally have done something on Christmas Day. Or for yeah for Christmas Day um so again I will be trying to put something together for that but it's just it's just a case of coming up with ideas really ideas and um then time to obviously ex execute the ideas but yeah that's my plan um what else have we been doing so on Wednesday I often go on a Wednesday with my son to the cinema um so this week there was the film called She Said. Um, I can't think who was in it. Well, there were a few actresses in it who I did recognise. There were a few I didn't. Um, yeah, there was the kind of one of the lead characters. I did recognise her, but I wouldn't like to say what her name was. I have no idea. Or what I've seen her in. <laughs> anyway, it was about the, um, you know, Miramax, um, you know, Harvey Weinstein um stuff um it was a really good film i have to say yeah really 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 good i appreciate you know probably not everybody's cup of tea and you know i get that um but you know it was a very very good film um yeah they acted it really well and oh you know just was a shocker really so you know because i mean obviously you know being in the UK I don't know whether we kind of necessarily heard everything or you know whether we wouldn't have maybe got all of the you know the updates and the um yeah I don't know whether we would have heard everything that was kind of like in that case to be honest but anyway it was a good film so if you're you know if that's out where you are and you're kind of thinking oh you know would it be any good I would definitely thought it was a very good film so yeah that was that was one worth seeing. Um, what else have we done? Oh, did the food shopping yesterday? I know, nothing to ripples on. That's how, that's how dull my life has uh, <laughs> become, to be honest. Nothing to ripples on whatsoever. So, yeah, um, food shopping and, yeah, pretty much kind of it, really. My daughter, um, she went to her friend's house one afternoon. Her friend came to ours then another afternoon. So she's got a little best friend um, at school now. Well, I mean, they've been best friends now for quite some, you know, some while, a few months. Um, but it's really nice, isn't it? I mean, just very sweet when, you know, girls kind of, they get like their best friend, you know, and they hug each other goodbye. And, oh, it's really, really sweet. I mean, my boys, they kind of more just had like groups of friends when they were at school. I think boys are slightly different. I'm not sure that they necessarily get like a best friend as such. Um, you know, but definitely girls do. I mean, I can remember being at school myself and having, you know, a best friend. And I can remember a couple of couple of people, um, you know, one who was a best friend for a few years. And then when I got a bit older, I think she'd left the school and she went to a different school. So I can remember then, you know making a new best friend and being you know very 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 good friends with her for a long time and uh yeah it's funny how those things they you know you kind of never forget those do you so that will be nice because um my daughter will kind of you know she'll always remember this lovely friendship that she's developed with her with her friend so yeah it's very sweet and you know yeah they're really nice nice together you know nice to see them being kind of caring and really nice to each other so yeah it's sweet and um yeah of course you know she can't wait to get back from holiday and obviously see her at school so they are putting together i think a christmas play you know I, i'm not sure whether it actually is going to be a nativity play in the traditional sense because often when schools do the nativity plays now they kind of put like a you know different spin on it so it may be that it will be um you know christmas with a difference if you see what i mean you know the nativity play but with a difference because that seems to be you know more what they seem to do now is kind of it's our take on christmas rather than it's you know this is a christmas nativity um you know which is is quite nice isn't it so yeah she 
said she is just doing some of the like singing and things. She's not kind of one for, um, you know, acting and things. I mean, I don't know whether they've really particularly done an awful lot of that at school, but yeah, she definitely doesn't seem to be one who would want to be maybe centre stage. She's more kind of like, you know, she likes to be, you know, yeah, more at the back and, um, well, not necessarily at the back, but, you know, just more in the, you know, in the kind of people singing and things like that. So, yeah, but she's she's having a nice time doing that. So my middle son, obviously, he started his job a few weeks ago. So touch wood, that's all going well for him. Um, yep, he got paid for the first time last week since he'd started. So obviously that, you know, made a huge difference. So, um, well, I mean, you know, he was enjoying it anyway. But I mean, obviously, you know, nobody wants to do it for free, do they? So, yeah, he's... Um, and these papers, sorry, these are my Silent Night um, papers, the new Christmas kit, which I have done a launch video and that will be coming soon. Um, okay, let's have a look through and see what other papers I've got here. Let's do this one. Okay, these are, oops, these are my, um, what are these? I can't remember the name of these. Uh, I think it is Paris something, but I now can't remember what, I'm afraid. So, yeah, I'm so sorry. Um, hmm. If it comes to me, I will obviously say, um, yeah. So anyway, he's, um, yeah, he's enjoying that. So, I mean, I don't know quite, you know, what it is that he's doing kind of on a daily basis, you know, but yeah, I think he's enjoying it. So he went shopping at the weekend, obviously with his first ever, you know, payday, he went with his friend and um, he, he didn't really buy a lot, to be honest, because, you know, things are expensive at the moment. So yeah, he just bought himself a, you know, a truck suit. Um, I mean, they all look the same to me, to be honest, but yeah, <laughs> he liked it. Um, so yeah, that's what he's been up to. Um, my eldest son, he's been, yeah, just working and things like that. So yeah, it's all, um, it's all, all fine, really. So, and obviously now just got to get ready for Christmas. So, you know, I said to my daughter, you know, oh, you need to um, write your Christmas list. So she's put five things on her Christmas list. And um, I still, let's let's have a look at the things that you've put then, you know, just um, let's have a look on Amazon and see what things those are. You know, before she sends it off to Santa, it would be nice to, to see what those things are. So she, yep, she showed me those things yesterday. Um, yeah, she's put things like, you know, slime. She loves slime. So she's put things like that. And there's these things called silks. Um, they seem to be quite an in thing at the moment. So she's put that down. And what it is basically is it's almost like a bed sheet. And she's written that on her Christmas list, bless her. You know, because she obviously thought Father Christmas, you know, he may not know what that was either. So she's put in the description, you know, like a bed sheet um you can hang from your bedroom door um you know or other places and then swing on it like a swing so that's her description of it um yeah it's quite a quite an an apt description really um so that is kind of what it's a bit like i don't know whether they're a new thing or you know whether they're um been around for a long time i don't know but they seem they seem quite a new thing um you know but i know that yeah she's kind of she loves things like that so um yeah that's what she's put as her you know her number one present is a silk you know to be able to hang from i think you can put, kind of put like a hook in the ceiling and then you'd hang from it there i mean it just sounds awful doesn't it and um yeah it's it's like a bed sheet so kind of you can make it like a hammock i suppose you know or a swing or a I don't know what else you could make it but you know um yeah when I say that you put it in the ceiling and hang from it I mean that just makes that sound awful it's not 
dangerous from what I can see. So please don't be thinking, oh my goodness, that sounds terrible. It's, I don't think it's dangerous. It's, um, it's a, a relaxing kind of thing. And it's quite good for, you know, for kids when they're feeling a little bit stressed or, you know, I mean, I don't know whether it's because we've obviously gone through, you know, some trauma in our house this year and things like that, you know, in our household. Maybe that's why she's feeling more that she needs those types of things. Um, or maybe she just really enjoys the swinging around, you know, I don't know. But um, yeah, right. Now I'm trying to see how long I've been filming for. Let me see. Oh, okay, 40 minutes. So, right, I'm probably not going to get time to cover those. So let's cover these ones. I must have been really waffling today because um, I'm sure that I did way more than these in the last video. Although, to be honest, I did have the pieces obviously ready in the last video, where this video, of course, I've had to, you know, make the pieces as we go. So, my own fault, you know. Honestly, the irony is, as you know, I never throw anything away. So, whatever possessed me to think, oh, I'm going to throw them away, I have no idea. But it was just like, why have I thrown that away when I actually... Sorry, I've just got to clean wipe in. Um, I actually was going to be then using them. You know, of all the things to throw away, I've thrown away the one thing that actually I was going to be using. So, and that's just how it goes, isn't it? It's just going to be typical that, of course, that would be the one thing I've thrown away. There we go. Okay, next one. Yeah, so... Um, you know, looks like you can get those silks from Amazon anyway. So, um, yeah. But, you know, it's good to obviously have a look at these things before the letter goes to Santa, isn't it? You know, because once you've posted it, then that's, you know, too late, really. I mean, I should probably do a screenshot of it if you get my meaning. So, yeah. There we go. And who knows what the um, boys would like. I keep asking them. Actually, my middle son did say there's a pair of trainers he would quite like. So, yeah, he's going to email me some. Like, while he's on the train or whatever. Because, obviously, that's just dead time while he's going to work. So, he's going to email me them while he's at work. Like, screenshots of them. You know, because there's no point telling me. I would not know what, you know, what trainers were what, to be honest. There's so many different types now. You know, I don't know that. Let's just say Nike Air, just because that's something I've heard of. Well, you know, I think when we were younger, you know, there was like Nike Air, and that was that was a trainer. You know, oh no, not not now. Nike Air, that's a range of trainers. So, you know, they. I don't know. I think you've got like Nike Air Max, and I don't know some other stuff as well, but. Yeah, completely like a whole minefield. So definitely, definitely would not have a clue what trainers were what without a picture. Okay, they all just look the same to me. Okay, dokie, that one's going to go there. Now, here you might have something like this going on, you know, where your envelope's just, um, you know, been glued down. You might want to just glue that in and the reason being is just because that might be a little sort of edge for your pieces to catch on as you're tucking them into pockets so it's just worth kind of you know making a little kind of note of things like that to just make it sort of you know an easier process to put things in and out of your pockets so okay put that one down again sort of belly band style so that then we've got the full, whoops, the full depth of the pocket. Okay. Like that, and then this one. Okay. Well, I cooked this um, thing yesterday called Hunter's Chicken. So a friend of mine had um, said about this. Now, I'm a vegetarian, um, which I know I've you know, said before, 
but the boys and my daughter they do eat meat so i had never you know never cooked hunter's chicken before i have heard of it um i didn't really know you know i didn't know what it was or anything now i don't know whether this is necessarily you know even now whether it is what it is but anyway um so it was a chicken breast this is how i did it anyway a chicken breast and i just wrapped it in some bacon um and then i sprinkled over um cheese all over the top of it and then i put it in the oven with um what did i put it in the oven with well i put it in the oven like that for half an hour just to cook the chicken and then i got some <laughs> over here in the uk we get these pasta sauces called stir stir and serve or you know stirring sauces um i just happened to use an aldi's own one it was tomato and basil flavor um and I just got that and poured that over the top of the chicken breasts with the, you know, with the cheese. So after they'd been in for half an hour and kind of cooked, I then poured the sauce over. Because um, it's not too saucy. You know, like if I'd used like a jar, there would have been a lot of sauce. Those stir and serves, they're just like a small pot. So kind of just right to pour over a chicken breast because actually there's not too, too much there. Um so yeah that and then put that in the oven for another 10 minutes well i have to say it went down like a a storm so apparently it was really delicious so yeah i obviously didn't taste it so i you know i wouldn't like to say but apparently it was really nice so i'm going to make it again tonight um because we're going to do our christmas tree tonight and i said well i'll make sort of a roast dinner but to be honest everybody's getting a bit fed up with roast dinner so um and I've stopped buying you know a chicken to cook because actually you know it kind of is better to just buy the chicken breasts I think you know you get sort of a whole pack of chicken breasts that you can use them for the whole week whereas a chicken you know you've just got that one meal really from it so and actually I think you maybe get more meat on the chicken breast than you do really off a chicken so um yeah I said, well, I can make that hunter's chicken again tonight to have like with the roast dinner as a sort of, you know, just a variation of, you know, with the roast dinner. So, yeah, that was kind of, it was quite fun to make because it was very, very easy, but, you know, looked like a really nice meal. So, um, yeah, I have to say my eating has been appalling lately and, um, yeah, just not really been eating very good things at all. I've been having things like porridge for my dinner and, you know, just rubbish really. But, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so I'm actually quite looking forward to dinner tonight now. Well, I mean, I would just have some um, vegetarian sausages probably with my roast dinner, but... Yeah, quite looking forward to, um, you know, hopefully everyone enjoying it. Okay. So I'm just going to put those ones down like that. So again, belly band style for this one. Okay. Like that. Okie dokie. Okay. I just can't believe how quick this year has flown by. I mean, I say it so often and, you know, talk about a scratch record, but it just, I, I never, you know, it never fails to amaze me just how quickly it has gone. This whole year, it's just like, what on earth? It has absolutely flown by. Honestly, I mean, the time just seems to go quicker and quicker, doesn't it, as you get older and I know I've talked about this before but I assume it's where you know the time is then a kind of smaller percentage of your life isn't it you know whereas I mean like when you're 10 a whole year that's 10 percent of your life I mean you know as you get older of course it's a much lesser percentage so I'm assuming that that's why the time flies you know much more but it definitely does and um yeah it's it's horrible isn't it I'd like to just be able to slow it down Okay. Okie dokie. 
There we go. So we're all going to go to my sister's house for um, Christmas dinner this year. So we did go there last year. Um, so this is my older sister. She's got a lovely big kitchen with um, a very big table and she was able to even join that with another table um, last year. So there was a lot of room. I can't remember how many of us there were, but there was a lot of us. Um, so yeah, she was able to kind of accommodate everybody. Um, and it was such a lovely Christmas meal that she made. So, I mean, I did laugh and said, well, you know, I'm more than happy for everyone to come to me. Um, I've got to be honest, my cooking skills, oh my goodness, have gone downhill so much. I mean, I have gone through like phases in my life where, you know, I've, I've liked cooking even and, you know, been more experimental and done lots of cooking and things. Well, those days appear to be long behind me because, yeah, as the time goes by, I do less and less proper cooking and more and more just, you know, lazy cooking and, you know, like the hunter's chicken. I mean, I just opened that jar of pasta sauce stuff and poured it over the chicken breast. So, you know, like I say, there was nothing complicated to that meal whatsoever. So, you know, if we had or if everyone came to me for Christmas dinner it would probably be pretty rubbish because I would just use, you know, frozen roast potatoes and frozen Yorkshire puddings, you know, and all of those kinds of shortcut things. So probably people would not be very impressed with my cooking. And, um, yeah, I mean, the boys are constantly saying to me, oh, mum, your cooking is just awful nowadays. You know, what's going on? You know, to the point they don't even like me cooking anymore. So, yeah, I just kind of said, I'm more than happy. You know, people are welcome to come to me, but it probably is rubbish, you know. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, luckily for me, luckily for everyone else, more the point, nobody wanted to take the risk. So, yeah, we're going to go to my sister's. Um, so that would be really nice because obviously my mum, um, you know, I've talked about her several times now. Yeah, she's still not, you know, feeling mentally kind of able to go and have her hip replacement um so yeah it is a shame but I mean it is what it it is and um you know she's going to have her hypnotherapy this week so hopefully that will kind of like you know help aid her to get through her procedure and I know that you know I've had so many lovely well wishes and things like that and you know she does she does know all of those things and she kind of does you know she understands it's a routine thing and people have them all the time and you know everyone kind of thrives you know very rarely does anything go wrong and you know she does understand all of that but she you know she like she said she just cannot make herself go at the moment and you know that's that's just where she's at really so yeah it's kind of one of those difficult situations because she does know all those things but something is you know not sitting well with her and she just can't you know can't make herself do it she's just really struggling with anxiety and you know it's um yeah she just can't make herself do it basically so you know it's just one of those things and I mean you know eventually I'm sure she'll she'll get past it I mean she obviously hasn't got a choice she's got to have the procedure you know um but yeah, she's got to do it in her own time, hasn't she? She can't, you know, she can't make herself do it. Nobody else can make her, her do it. You know, it's got to be when she's feeling mentally able to cope with it. So, um, yeah. But thank you so much to everyone for your lovely, kind words and kind wishes for her. That's so nice of you. Um, you know, I know that, yeah, she, she, you know, she does appreciate kind of, when I've told her that, you know, passed on messages and things, she does appreciate that. And, you know, like I say, she, you know, she does kind of in her heart of heart know most of what you're saying. She just can't, um, not can't rationalise, but can't overcome it at the moment. So, yeah. Right. These are the ones that we have done. So we have done one, two, three, four, five. So, yeah, didn't race through them, but, you know, it's OK. Five is OK. So let's just decorate one up so I'm thinking let's decorate this bird chase one shall we because it looks very pretty doesn't it so yeah let's decorate this one okay now I have got some of these um you know ribbon thingy bobs sat here so I might use one of those I've got some of my green labels these might not really be the right shade but let's just have a look and see 
Oops. Okay. There we go. Oh, it's not too bad. Yeah, not too bad actually. And I do quite often like to have a label cut in half. You know, if you again, if you watch my channel, you'll kind of know that. So, yeah, I think it looks pretty when it's cut in half. Or we could have like maybe a coloured book plate on there. Something like that might be quite nice. I've got some of my flowers. So yeah, perhaps we'll go down the more of the florally route instead. So wasn't my initial um, thoughts but yeah maybe we'll do something more like this so I just like to take that center out of those flowers and then glue them together and I try and layer them up so the petals are like overlapping where there's not petals if that makes sense so like that okay there we go oops Oh, sorry I've got glue threads now just oh glue threads <laughs> stuck on the flower I can't actually move away from the flower there we go so yeah I mean that looks quite pretty doesn't it and then I've got some thin lace here sometimes these thin lace trims can be really really useful so I'm kind of thinking maybe even have like some lace across all three of the little bits so I'm just going to use that fabric tack there oh and I just want to say thank you so much to the lovely Michelle so the lovely Michelle who runs our Facebook group so hi Michelle if you watch this or you know if you catch this video at all I just want to say a massive thank you she is just like the loveliest lady and um, you know I know that she does an amazing job on our Facebook group so I couldn't do it obviously without her so thank you so much Michelle I appreciate you so so much and she's such a kind soul as well because she sent me the most gorgeous bunch of flowers um last week so yeah again she's so kind honestly she has sent me flowers before I mean I literally feel embarrassed that she's you know that she's so kind that she's sending me flowers it's oh just so 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 kind of you and um, yeah, she sent me them and she's sent them before and she uses this company called Wild and Bloom. And I know I've talked about this before. They're these lovely flowers which are sent flat in a box. So they're not sent like a bouquet or a bunch or anything like that. They're sent laying down flat in a, you know, in a closed box. And when you open them, it just says, oh, shh, these flowers are sleeping or your, your flowers are sleeping. And um you know, you get them out and obviously then you can put them in your vase with the flower food. And honestly, within like, you know, a very, very short time, half an hour or something, they've perked right up and come out and bloomed and, you know, look gorgeous. So I couldn't tell you what the flowers are that she's sent me this time. They are lilac. Whether they're lilacs, who knows? I have no flower knowledge, I'm afraid. So yeah, but they are so pretty. Um, They just look gorgeous and they smell lovely. So, yeah, I wouldn't even like to guess what they are, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah, I mean, like I say, they are lilac. Whether they're those flowers called lilacs, I don't know, because I, you know, I'm not sure I really know what they look like. Um, but they're so pretty. So, yeah, thank you so much, Michelle. You are so kind and so naughty. You mustn't do things like that, because honestly, you know, please don't spend money on me. It's just, um, yeah, I just you know I appreciate you so much and you know yeah you do enough so please you know I I love them honestly but you're just too too kind and too generous so please you know yeah know that you know I do really love them and really do appreciate them but honestly you don't have to do things like that it's just um yeah so so kind of you yeah, they look very pretty. They're on my kitchen windowsill, so that's where I always put them. Um, you know, that's where I put flowers whenever I get flowers. Well, not that, not that I get flowers anyway from anyone else, um, but from Michelle whenever she sends flowers. Um, yeah, I always put them on my kitchen windowsill, so that's just, you know, that's where they look pretty, and that's where, you know, everyone can see them when you come in 
actually you can probably even see them as soon as you come into the house to be honest because um you can kind of see through to the kitchen and i think probably they're on the middle of the kitchen windowsill i would imagine you could probably see them from the front door i don't know really but yeah probably can um but they're definitely you know you can see them as soon as you walk towards the kitchen so yeah they look gorgeous thank you so much okay right let's put this here and then i've just got that um beautiful bow isn't that just such a gorgeous color so just yeah love how that looks it's really 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 pretty so i'm going to put that over there okay and again, you know, when I glue things like this on, I just like to use my hot glue. It's nice and quick and easy. You know it's then glued down. You don't have to keep pressing it. And whenever anything's a little bit on the bulky side, you know, I just find that actually hot glue is, you know, is the best glue to use because there's no messing, you know, no messing about. Where if you glue bulky things with a wet glue, you're going to have to sit and, you know, press it down and hold it down. So, yeah, for me, I just, I like to use things like this because they're nice and, you know, nice and instant, nice and fast. Right, okay, so that's that. And I'm just going to see whether we might want, you know, one of those little pretty um, wax cabachons that we've made. Whether one of those might look good in the middle. Oh, not, not the purple one. Got a white one here. Oops. Well, it's quite pretty, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm thinking that one looks quite nice. Um, and then maybe, maybe, oh, just spotted a little vintage postage stamp up there. Oh. oh, I don't know how vintage that is, actually. It's got kind of people playing cricket or something, I think. Well, to be honest, I can't really see what they're doing, actually. They might be um, crop picking. I can't honestly see at all. I think they're picking crops, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, at first I thought they were elephants, actually. Um, <laughs> I've just, my eyesight's just getting worse and worse and worse, honestly. I can't see anything. <laughs> right, okay. Now I have got some butterflies here. Again, I still need to print some of my bright butterflies. So I probably have not got one that's quite the right colour, but let's just see. They're probably a bit on the large side. I've got a slightly smaller one. Yeah, it's not brilliant, is it? Mm. Mm. It's not brilliant. I mean, I would like to have a butterfly on there, but yeah, I need to print some off really um, because these are the only ones I've got at the moment. So yeah, but that's fine. It looks, it looks fine. Oh no, hold on. Got another little pouch here, bright butterflies. Oh, it's pretty much empty. Yeah, I've just got two. Yeah, again, they're not the right colour. So, yes, unfortunately, I do not have some bright butterflies that would go, but I'm just going to glue this down. When I do get round to printing some bright butterflies off, I might add one onto here, but, yeah, I probably won't. Let's be honest, I'll probably forget. But, right. Okay, so that is that. Let's pull in the few that we've done. Like I say... I was just very poor today on the um, making front. I have only managed to make five, which is rubbish. Um, but five and obviously one of them is fully decorated. So, yeah, I hope you like them. And, um, you know, I hope you have fun if you are going to make some. Thank you so much for watching. And, um, yeah, obviously keep your eyes peeled on my advent calendar series if, you know, if you are sort of wanting something like that. Hope that you're all enjoying the Build Your Own Folio series. Um, just a couple more episodes, I think, or three more episodes to go for that. And, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a fantastic week. And, yeah, have a great day, everybody. I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks, then. Bye.